it would sure be nice to give you some really cool intro pitch as to why you should keep watching this video right now. Would but be. we don't know what we're drinking in either glass. So we do it this way so you get the most honest opinions possible. I feel like that might be reason enough to stick around. Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Erin. I'm Josh. Thanks for joining us today yeah. for this double blind tasting of whatever these two pours are. What, what? If you are new here, Erin is more of a social sipper who likes her balanced rise. I'm more of a whiskey nerd who likes a big, powerful bourbon. But we come together and do these blind tastings for you guys again so that we can eliminate all the bias with these blinds and give you the most honest opinions possible. So yeah. we're going to smell them, taste them, rate them, find out the price and see if that changes our ratings before we find out what we're drinking. And we're doing this with these two samples because they were paired up in our blind sample pool for some reason or another. Maybe they're allocated versus available, expensive versus inexpensive, or just two products to know. check out. Yep. But let's get we'll into the out. first glass, okay. see what our first impressions are on it. Cheers. This smells sweet and bourbony. Yes, it does. It does. Good job. That's, it what I, that's what I deduce. <laughs> yes, it's sweet, bourbony, kind of like it's got that caramel apple thing going on that sometimes can that. bourbons can get. Like a granny apple. Oh, granny smith apple. Yeah, it doesn't have that tartness, but it's like a... I'm getting it's, tartness. It's that kind of vibe, yeah. It's like a just a very pleasant, gentle smell. There's a little alcohol edge to it, but nothing too offensive. Yeah. It smells like bourbon. Cheers. I like the flavor. It tastes like it smells. Like, it's, it's not the powerful punch that I think you usually like, mm -hmm. but it's pretty nice. It's, it's, it would be what I would classify as something that would be easy to drink, meaning... I could drink it at any time. It's not a mood pour. Like I could, in any situation, I could go for something like this. It's pretty middle of the road as far as what you would expect in a bourbon. Yeah, nothing outstanding, but nothing off-putting. Nothing off-putting at all. Very middle of the road, you know, standard Kentucky bourbon and it tastes like. don't hear us say middle of the road and think like it's not good. It is good. Middle of the road is good. I feel, I feel like if you can be consistently in that in the lane mm -hmm. it's in the lane like it's consistently yeah. in the lane of bourbon which i feel like is a good place to be well by the very nature of averages a lot of stuff has to be in the middle for there to be outliers on the top and bottom end true this is neither an outlier on the top or bottom end it's just very pleasant at least on first sip but we yeah. do owe a second sip just to give it its due diligence we'll do it gosh why do sips get more oaky on the second sip for me I appreciate it because it brings another element to the pour that it didn't have on the no, first sip. I appreciate it too, but it, is that like that with everyone or no. is it just me? No. Uh, it definitely is a thing for us. Okay. Let us know in the comments below if after your first sip, the second sip and subsequent sips, you start to get more oak. And and by oak, I mean, if, if you're not like familiar with what that means for me, that means drying. Like it, the, second like woodiness. Sip, the second sip usually has a little bit more of a drying aftertaste, mm -hmm. which I have been informed by Josh. That means it's the oak influence. So that's why I say that because that's what I've been told it is <laughs> yeah i mean the second sip everything kind of comes together a little bit more the sweetness comes down a little the oak comes up yeah. a little balances it out like i said i mean it's just it's, good. it's as classic as a profile as you could possibly get for what seems to be a kentucky bourbon very enjoyable very happy if with this that glass. is not a bourbon i would be shook i'll say that's the kind of glass that like sitting on the back porch or you know, hanging out by the pool or hanging out at the grandparents' house, just yeah. chilling with family. And I want something that I don't want to think about too much, but I just want to enjoy. Great glass for yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. Let's get into the second glass and see how it compares. I feel like this smells similar, but it has more of a round smell. Mm -hmm. Like if the shape of a circle or no, a sphere, is that a sphere? Is that a ball? All spheres are circles, but not all circles are spheres because a sphere is a 3D. Yeah. Object. If the shape of a sphere could be put into a smell, it would be in this glass. <laughs> I don't disagree that it, that there's a lot of commonality with glass one, but for me, this is coming through with a lot more vanilla than glass one. Oh, interesting. Okay. And that vanilla along See, with the caramel sweetness. I've already forgotten what glass one smells like. So this is why we have to do a head, like a back to back soon. The vanilla along with the caramel sweetness and that kind of fruitiness that it has is just providing a, a way more rounded, robust, mm -hmm. deeper, broader, richer nose. Yeah. I hope that carries to the palate. Let's find out. I feel like that through line's still there. It's it's a little bit more spicy. I wouldn't say it 
it's got heat, but there has like a, some prickliness on my tongue that wasn't in the first glass. Really? I'm not getting that at all. I definitely do get more of a, a, a broader, deeper flavor profile, but it is not to the, like the nose to me was three times broader and deeper. Oh, the wow. palate to me is only like twice as broad and deep. It doesn't. That's what she said. It does not. I was wanting a little bit more on the palate, gotcha. but yeah, that yeah. was just the first sip. Okay. You can't trust it. Let's get awesome. a second one. I don't know how to feel about this one. It's not bad, but I'm already trying to compare it to glass one and I'm not sure how I feel about it in comparison to glass one. I need more time with glass one. I need to drink them closer together because I already forget how glass one tastes. <laughs> well, I think glass two to me is on second sip, it, it's providing what I was hoping it provided on the first sip. Okay. It just wasn't there initially cool, cool. for whatever reason, but it's coming through and the fruit sweetness on glass two is leaning more towards like the grape candy. We've been uh, indulging in some uh, mini airheads been around the house. annihilating some airheads in this household. I have been. The, the little one wants uh, mini airheads to take to school lunch. So we've been getting bags of those and the purple airhead. Yeah. yeah is I'm feeling can, that in this class. I can see that. I might have to go uh, taste it and then compare. On the break? On the Once we're done, I'll leave, save some and compare. Okay, after the fact. Yeah, yeah. so it's just like a, a deeper, darker fruit in glass too, more vanilla, about the same amount of oak to be honest, but the oak is just a little bit more rounded and sweet on glass too. I will say the oak is a little more, it's not as drying on glass too. Yeah. That I know. Yeah, so we're gonna take some time, clear our palate, start with the second glass, yeah. go back to the first. Yeah see where we land on these, pick a favorite, get some rankings together, and then we'll be back with all that. See you in a second. All righty, let's see where our results are, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. That what was, do you- That was weird. <laughs> what do you think about these two? So it's gonna be a draw for me, dog, because <laughs> bringing back some old Randy Jackson, American Idol, I I don't know, the, they taste good. I'm gonna give them both thumbs up, for now, depending on price. If I had to pick one to drink again, because I know you're gonna ask me that, it would be mm. probably glass two, but only because there's like a little bit more robustness to what's there. Now what's there, I couldn't tell you, <laughs> but whatever it is, it's more robust. So okay. I'll go with that. <laughs> All right, so thumbs up on both yeah. with a slight preference to glass two slight today. Slight preference, yeah. And I'm I'm willing to change my, my thumbs up if the prices are too high, because these are both good. I feel like they're both Fine. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to pay more than like forty or fifty bucks for either of these. Okay. Yeah. To me, very kind of standard, middle of the road. Again, bourbon, quite enjoyable for what they are. Nothing hugely standing out to me. Everything kind of held true as I spent more time. It just reaffirmed the fact that glass two is a little darker, a little richer, has a little bit more sweet oak, yeah. has the darker fruit element to it. Glass one did come back a little bit and put up a fight with like a little bit more of like a gooey caramel kind of note in there. Oh, interesting. But the Didn't darker the darker fruit and the sweeter oak on glass two won out for me pretty easy. Yeah. Glass two is my favorite, but they're both kind of, again, in that middle cluster of just what seems to be good solid yeah. Kentucky bourbon. I would, I would concur. I mean, they seem like they would be maybe around the 100 proof point or so, I would imagine. Yeah, perhaps, maybe. Glass two, I could see potentially being slightly higher but I don't think it is. Okay, well, we will find out the price okay. and see if that change. By the way, I'm thumbs up on both of them as well. Oh. I find them enjoyable and would love to have bottles of these around for easy sipping when okay. I don't need to think too much about it, okay. you know, or maybe use in cocktails or something. So glass Can't number one okay. is number two oh. and glass number two is number one. Oh, these are both $35. You said 40 to 50. I don't think I said it in the I video. I went higher than I wanted to. 40 was really my max, but I said 50 because I know prices are going up. In the video, I don't think I got to it because we got distracted with other stuff, but I was going to say like 30, 35 bucks, 30, yeah. 40 bucks. These are both these 35. Like. I'm just going to tell you I'll right now. I'll stay thumbs up on both of them. Yeah. I think I, these are worth checking out if mm -hmm. you like sweet bourbon. Yeah. That caveat, they're not too sweet. They're no. not overly sweet. Did I say too sweet? No. I just said sweet Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. I just want to make sure there's a caveat there because when I hear, as someone who okay. doesn't like sweet bourbon, too, super sweet bourbons, when I hear sweet Kentucky bourbon, I'm like, I'm out. Like if you say sweet red wine, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. But if you're like, here's some red wine, it's nice, it's got a little sweetness to it. I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, give me that. Yeah. But you say yeah. sweet red so wine. So I just want to, I want to like put some barometers around when he means sweet. It's not super duper sweet. So like yeah. someone who doesn't appreciate super sweet can still appreciate it. Agreed. 
All right, let's okay. find out glass number two first. They're both $35. Hang on, don't don't click yet. Yeah. Are you staying thumbs up? Yeah, I'm staying thumbs up. I'll say thumbs up on both of these two. I'm happy with that price. Good. Yeah. So glass number one. Glass number one, number two in our pool is... Wild Turkey Long Branch. Oh, wow. Eight year and it's 86 proof. Wow. Okay. I've never heard of Long Branch. What's is that, is that still like yeah. produced? Is it? Yeah, you've had it before. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I remember, like, as you know, I remember these things. What's glass number one? Uh, number two. Russell, number one in our pool. Russell's Reserve 10 year and that it's extra, 90 proof. The extra age shows. Through. So these are both turkey products. Yes. That I do know because I know that Russell's is a turkey product. Go me. So that ex that explains like the through line that we picked up on. Okay. Because they are from the same distillery. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is really interesting. So. I put this match up in here because they're about the same price as we just learned. Yeah. And one's eight years, one is 10 years. Long Branch has this mesquite charcoal filtering. It, this is like okay. a product that was developed with Matthew McConaughey. Is and that similar to Jack Daniels filtering process? They for use their sugar, maple char sugar maple charcoal. Okay. Whereas this is mesquite charcoal. Gotcha. So slightly different. But, but similar same process, idea. but different charcoal. Yeah, same idea. Okay. Uh, oh, I mean, it's not exclusive to Jack Daniels. People. Right, I know, but that's but what they people... don't know. A lot of Kentucky uh... distilleries have done charcoal filter mellowing for uh, back, I think, as late as like the 1800s. That's true, before Jack but Daniels. Jack Daniels is the one that brought it to the forefront for the consumer. Yeah. So they... that, that's what I think a lot of people associate that with Jack Daniels specifically. Right. They made it their thing. They make yeah. it a marketing thing rather than some other companies that Which, just did it. Kudos to you for that marketing genius. But look, Long Branch is a good product. It's a good, I think both of these. If you're newer into bourbon, mm -hmm. you kind of owe it to yourself to buy bottles of each of these and try them yeah. to see if you like them. Or if you only want to buy one and not the other, I think probably get the Russell's 10 just because it, it gives you that 10 year age statement. You get to see what a little bit more of an oak impact you can get on a pour. But it's different. Cause it some, is. Some, sometimes when it, there's a 10 year product, it can be too oaky. It can and be. this is balanced oak. So but here's the don't thing. always go by the age statement. Here's the thing though, it's balanced to us. This is why I'm telling you to oh. try the 10 year because if you drink this and it's way too oaky for you, that will let you know that oh, a lot yeah. of older bourbons may not be your thing right now. You might have to work your palate into mm -hmm. enjoying and appreciating that level of oak. Mm -hmm. I think that dryness we were getting on glass one was more of that mesquite charcoal finishing than or filtering, filtering. not finishing rather than, you know, the yeah. the oak because it, it's, it's only eight years old, which is not terribly old for a Kentucky bourbon, but it's good age. But yeah, I mean, we were kind of right on par. I think for at least for me, both of these drink a little higher than their proof. Yeah. But, I thought we we thought they were 100 proof for sure. But not big on spice. Like I thought Long Branch had less spice than Bob Turkey or uh, Russell's 10. I agree. I think the Russell's has a little bit more spice because it had more of the tingling on my tongue, like mm -hmm. I was saying. Yeah. So I, I would I would recommend shooting for the Russell's 10 if you want to experience the oak and a little bit of spice and yeah. heavier vanilla notes. Whereas the if you like things that lean a little bit more like sweet, tart and bright maybe the Long Branch is the bottle for you. Yeah. But this was a fun comparison matched up in our pool to, to see, you know, which one you might want to get if you're new to these products or if you haven't visited them in a long time, you know, we were thumbs up on both of them yeah, and happy great. happy to have a bottle. We're actually out of our Russell's 10 mm. and I, I probably honestly do need to re-up on it because it's a good age statement, it's a good price and it's good in cocktails. It's a good solid bottle to have and you're not going to pay a lot of money for it out the door. So I feel like yeah. it's a good one to have in your arsenal. Yeah. And if you want to join a great community of people who mm. love whiskey, then you should check out our Patreon. You should. Over there, we've got people sharing whiskey, sharing samples, helping each other find things, talking whiskey all day long on Discord, which you get to through our Patreon. That's also where we release our barrel picks. And we did a couple of Russell's Reserve picks this year that should be coming out in a couple of months. So if you want to get on board with those, you can check that out down there. Yep. And you can check out some shirts like these right here. And I'm wearing my one and only yeah. shirt. She's got her Led Zeppelin inspired shirt. I got my Pink <laughs> Floyd inspired shirt. So if you want to check those out and some some of these visky crystal footed tasting glasses, which have oh so great swirl ability. They do. Then you can check those out <laughs> down there at stuffandwhiskey.com. And if you like these kind of unbiased, no hype, blind content, poor blind tasting things that we do, <laughs> Do we even know what we do? Lost words there for a second. 
<laughs> if you want to, if you want more of that, yeah, in your feed, come on, then subscribe to the channel. Jump in. The water's that's, fine. That's what we do. So that's it. Yeah, that's it for today, y'all. Be good to each other, and until next time, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>